The Arizona centipede is an amazing creature. It has giant pincer claws and a painful poisonous bite. And for something with more than 40 legs to keep track of, it moves with astonishing speed and grace. Recently, some California researchers put this creature through its paces in the lab to see exactly how it moves. And joining us now with more details on these, our multi-legged little friends, is Richard Wassersug. He's a biologist at Dalhousie University, but he brings us weird and wonderful science. Hi, Richard. Hello, Jay. So, Richard, uh, what, is, would they have, what have these researchers found out about centipedes? Well, they've answered two really great classic questions. Uh, one is, how does a centipede decide where to put its feet? I mean, if, you're, if you have uh, many dozens of feet, you don't want to trip over your own legs. So how, how does a centipede know where to put its feet? That's the first question they've asked. They've also answered an interesting question, a uh, slightly odd one, but an interesting one nevertheless, about how much does it cost to move as a centipede versus moving if you have uh, two legs, four legs, six legs, or, or whatever. Now, can I ask you a quick question before we start? D does a centipede actually have a hundred legs? Uh, no, uh, they may have uh, some with more than that, but the centipede that was used in this study actually has 44 legs. It's a, an Arizona centipede. So a uh, cut rate uh, centipede. It's, it's still a lot more legs than you and I would want to have to control <laughs> and, and work. Uh, so it's, it's a pretty good uh, challenge for, uh, for uh, an animal to be able to work with that many legs. So you said one of the questions they answered was uh, where does a centipede put its legs or how does it decide where to put them? Yes. Now, they did this uh, by simply doing high-speed video films, watching these centipedes run on, on essentially miniature treadmills and looking at exactly where they put their feet. And what they found, which I think is really sort of uh, fascinating, is, a, is a, a very simple answer to, a, to a, a problem. This animal has lots and lots of legs, but it turns out when they watch the video, they actually put each following leg essentially exactly where the previous leg had been put. So one way of solving the question about where you put your legs is if it works for the previous leg, put your next leg in the same spot. And as a result of that, what they showed is that the animals are essentially being supported at any moment on essentially three points. And, and as I can show you here in my hand, I mean, we think of a tripod or as a cameraman uh, use a tripod to hold the camera stable, we know that right. three legs is the minimal number of legs that will give you a stable support. And uh, what's neat about that, I think, is that that's the same number of legs that essentially the average insect, insects have six legs, well, it's the same number of legs that the average insect, insect has on the ground at any one time. The, an insect can pick up six, three legs, and keep three legs on the ground, always be stable, insects never fall over. Well, it turns out the centipede essentially reduces all these legs such that by having them all land on one side in the same spot and then the other side on the same spot for that side, they can have a, a tripod of support and can keep on moving without ever losing their balance. But Richard, uh, why then do they, at least in this case, need uh, 41 other <laughs> legs besides the three that are forming the tripod? Well, that allows them to climb over irregular surfaces. And in fact, this study was done uh, in a lab on a, on a flat surface. But of course, what they can do then is, is jack up a, to a higher level, build a tripod of support above uh, the surface that they were originally on, and therefore can maintain stability on very irregular surfaces. But on a flat surface, they basically just need three points of contact, and that's what they maintain. Uh, by cycling their legs through the same spot where the where previous leg had last landed. Now, does that make the whole process of figuring out, I put that in quotes, where the next leg's going to go much easier? Like the computation that you'd need? Well, it, it, it certainly should. And in fact, it's interesting to ask that question because one could ask, why would anybody want to know this? Uh, it turns out that uh, for military purposes, for instance, for looking for mines uh, or on the ocean bottom or on, on minefields on land, it would, be, it would be nice if we had autonomous robots that were very stable, that wouldn't fall over, and that had very simple uh, neuronal electric circuits right. uh, that could tell them where to put their, their legs, essentially. They could walk around, wouldn't, wouldn't get caught in, in corners, and the, and the centipede might be a nice model for that. So there's real interest in looking at, at how simple its nervous system can be for regulating where its feet, and the military, in fact, are funding this research. Now, you also said that the research team answered uh, a different question, which was, I, as I recall, a comparison between this sort of locomotion involving tens and tens of legs versus two-legged, four-legged, six-legged, and so on. Yes. Uh, the uh, other question is not just on regulation, it's on essentially the cost of locomotion. Because once again, if you want to build autonomous robots to do searching for, for mines or whatever, it'd be nice if they could be uh, um, simple 
uh, and it would be nice if they were not expensive to run. So the question is, how much does it cost to move? And one might think that with all those extra legs, it costs a lot. But in fact, what they've done is, by, you, by running these animals on force platforms where they, they could actually see the force that's applied to the surface because it would light up. They had a very special uh, a gelatin material that would cause it to light up in certain light. And they could actually calculate the force produced by the centipede as it ran across the surface. And it turns out that to move a one kilogram, these are the units they use, although I wouldn't want to run into this, but to move a one kilogram <laughs> centipede, one meter, cost a unit of energy, we call it a joule. Well, it turns out that that's exactly the same, that the same lab is calculated for insects, for uh, animals with four legs, uh, or, and for animals with two legs, and so forth. That is, the cost of locomotion uh, turns out to be about the same. So the advantages of having a certain number of legs does not appear to be in the energetics. It appears to be on, in terms of their ability to be stable on various surfaces. I think I have one kilo centipedes in my basement if you'd like to come someday <laughs> and look at them. <laughs> well, I'll send them to Berkeley. That's where they did this research. <laughs> Thanks very much, Richard. Thank you, Jay. Talk to you again.